Good day, everybody, and what's up? Welcome to the podcast for Sofa Sex and She Comes First. I'm Dr. Nick. Today is September the 13th, 2022, and I hope everyone out there is having a great day. So right off the bat, once again, I'm glad to see everyone liked last week's podcast about women who can give blowjobs and have an orgasm themselves without any direct clitoral stimulation. And also, I got a few DMs from women saying, I do this all the time with my man, and it's great, and I love it. So, it's really a thing out there, believe it or not. And at the same time, if you really like that podcast, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, especially over on Twitter, because that's growing kind of slow, but it's all good. And plus, over on Twitter, you will get direct access to my Just a Tip memes that I put up three times a week. So, let's turn a corner here and talk about this week's topic, which will be about cheating. And yes, I know I've done several podcasts recently that are all about cheating and the ups and downs that go along with it. But let's come at it from a slightly different angle this time. For example, let's just say that you cheated. The question is, should you tell your partner? Should you confess or just keep it to yourself? And what's nice about this topic is there seems to be a lot of disagreement among the experts that are out there. Some say yes, confess. Some say no. What would you do? So let's talk about that today. Well, to get this podcast started, I'm sure that we've all heard the old idea that honesty is the best policy. So if you decided to cheat on your partner, the best thing you can do is tell them that you did it and just be honest about it and keep it moving and see what happens. Well, some of the experts of today kind of view it slightly differently. They're starting to say things like honesty is not always the best policy. So for, for example, we have Kevin Darnay the author of My Cat Won't Bark, and he says, if your reason for telling is to rid yourself of the guilt that you are carrying around, then you are hurting them in order to selfishly feel better. If you are no longer cheating nor plan to ever cheat again, and your mate is highly unlikely to ever find out, then take it to your grave. He says, make amends going forward by being the absolute best mate or spouse you possibly can be. So to continue this idea where honesty is not the best policy, I'm going to cite an article from Bustle.com where once again, Kevin Darnay is giving his thoughts about this. And he says, you know, if it's only a one-time thing or maybe even a two-time thing, Spare your partner the agony of going through all this and keep it to yourself and take it to your grave. Because in the end, it's only going to end up hurting both of you. And yes, you may feel a little less guilty in the end, but still, there could be some serious damage done to your relationship. Now, for me, this is where things get kind of gray because he says this, if you plan to stop, still don't tell them and spare them the agony. He says, sharing indiscretions is extremely damaging to hear about and work through. There is no value to the relationship in sharing events that will no longer be happening. You've essentially passed the baton of pain to them when it's not fair to do so, it's very selfish. So it seems like in this case, if you're still cheating, it's beyond once or twice. And this has been going on for a little bit of time now. And you plan to stop, but you still haven't stopped yet. That's getting kind of iffy. Still continuing with this idea of honesty not being the best policy. He says this, if your partner is going to find out you be sure to tell them first. Now, in my opinion, this is where shit's getting all kinds of messy. So, for example, 
if you're cheating and you're out with your other person, someone else may see you out like a friend of yours or a mutual friend. You don't know. And all they have to do is just press that little button on their phone and they got a picture of you. And it's like, who the fuck is this person? He says, if your main partner is going to find out, you better tell them first because otherwise they're going to be hurt. They're going to be angry. In many cases, and rightfully so, they're going to be pissed off and ready to fight and start asking questions like, who the fuck is this bitch? Or who, or who the fuck is this guy? Or whatever. But apparently this seems to be the idea now among some experts out there where they say honesty is not the best policy. But as I just said a second ago, this shit can get messy really quickly. Now, in this same Bustle article, all along they have been saying honesty is not the best policy. But there's a section in here that says if your partner asks you if you are cheating, be honest. Because they actually say something to the effect of if your partner asks you if they're if you are cheating or if there's someone else or whatever, and you say no, even though you are lying to them, that's a form of gaslighting and all the other bullshit. So now in this article, they say, if you are confronted by your partner, now tell the truth and fess up. Oh, okay. So everything else in the article, you lie, but only when they ask you, now you tell the truth. That's some bullshit right there. Be careful playing with that because that can get you fucked up. Real talk. You got that? So now on the other side of the coin, let's go back to the idea which stated that honest, honesty is the best policy. And I'm going to say an an article from Psychology Today. And in this article, they actually expand the definition of cheating to include physical affairs, of course, pornography, strip club, playing around on hookup apps, and other specific sexual or non romantic acts, either real or virtual. Now, this kind of changes things up a bit. So, in this article, they say, Cheaters who decide to keep their infidelity under wraps justify their decision with the thought, what my partner doesn't know can't hurt him or her. Almost every cheater engages in some form of this specific denial, and they're almost always able to convince themselves that their thinking is correct and valid. Of course, it is not. In truth, even though betrayed spouses may have no idea that their partner is sleeping around, they nearly always feel and experience some degree of emotional and even physical distancing by their partner. Sadly, they often blame themselves for this, wondering what they've done to create such a rift and to provoke the cheater's defensiveness and and anger if and when questions are asked about the perceived and very real distancing. But in many cases, this is what happens. Once you get away with cheating the first few times, you are much more likely to cheat again in the future, which will cause your relationship to deteriorate even further. After there has been some sort of infidelity, one of the main complaints from spouses is that they no longer trust their partner. So going back to the article from Psychology Today, They suggest that the key to bettering your damaged relationship is not keeping what you did a secret, it's restoring that trust. Of course, trust is not automatically repaired just because you stop cheating and manage to stay faithful for a certain amount of time. Instead, trust is rebuilt over time through consistent and sometimes painful actions of telling the truth. This means that you will need to tell the truth about absolutely everything all the time, no matter what, even when you know it might upset your partner. Now, see, I have a question about that because the article says, tell the truth about everything all the time, no matter what. I'm not sure about that. 
In their circumstance, I would suggest taking this advice with a grain of salt. So, to close up this podcast, I have to ask you one quick question. Do you feel honesty is always the best policy when it comes to infidelity? Because trust me, I'm not here to judge you one way or another. That's just a simple question that you may have to deal with at some point in your life or not. And it's all good. But for me, where I sit, if there is a possibility of STD transmission, oh yeah, you got to tell. You got to tell. Because if you don't know, certain STDs can really do a lot of damage to people, especially if they, if they don't know and it goes untreated for a very, very long time. And my next question is this. Decision to end your relationship be based on the amount of time you have in. So, for example, if you were dating for only a couple months and someone cheats, are you more likely to save it to yourself, you know, keep it to yourself, or would you tell, or just end it and go with the other person? Versus if you've been married for a couple years or a couple of decades and you have kids and then someone steps out, what do you do? Do you keep it to yourself? Do you tell? Because that could have serious consequences and serious financial consequences as well, and serious lifestyle consequences. So, on that note, I'm out. You guys have a great day. Stay tuned.